Hi there, this is Rene Rubacava with Odonet. And today I want to talk a little bit about um, working with your data inside of ArcGIS Online. So we've covered recently how you can upload your data into ArcGIS Online and you can use the geo-enrichment tools to enrich your data with some demographic information. And you can also do some other analysis stuff inside of ArcGIS Online with your data as well. So if I were to go to my map here, let's open up a new web map. And this one start adding some data. So I'm gonna add some data from my particular uh, content. So let me double check this here. So I've got this request data here. I believe I have another one as well. Uh, this one here, I think this one's got more data in it. All right, so let's zoom in. Check this out. All right, done adding layers. Let me turn this off. Turn this one off. What's this one look like? Okay, so this one does not have anything, so I'll remove that. And I've got this data set here. So this is a pretty decent little data set. Let me change the symbology on this so it's easier to see here. That was the default symbology. And actually, let's go down to uh, based on issue type. All right, so that, just quickly, I'll take a look at the issues I have. I've got a new request, sweet light, graffiti, pothole, other, and a couple of uh, looks like ones that I just randomly put in. These are probably test data sets, um, sewer and whatnot. And this was data that I had shared in my ArcGIS Align account for uh, people that were going through my first book, would have a data set that they could use for the book instead of having to create their own if they didn't want to. So let's just make this a uh, very simple, uh, actually no, sorry, let's do it that way. I click done. Okay, so I've got a bunch of points on here and maybe I want to start doing some aggregation on this data. I um, mean, looking at the map right now, it's kind of tough to see exactly what's going on. And yes, I can create a heat map and maybe do a few more things to kind of visualize this a bit better. But uh, maybe just for this little subset here, I want to do a bit of aggregation. Okay, so one of the things you can do is you can click on this analysis button here. And you have a uh, lot of different options when you want to perform analysis. We have this uh, managing data if you want to dissolve some boundaries or extract some data in there. Uh, there's proximity tools that's basically to create buffers, uh, do some sort of routing, drive time analysis, uh, analyze patterns. And we use this analyze patterns, I think, when we did the um, uploading the GeoJSON data of bars into ArcGIS Online. And I believe we did the uh, find hotspots or maybe calculate density to find out uh, where the um, uh, most dense location of bars were located. Uh, we already, we've already done geo enrichment, which is the data enrichment in here. Uh, find locations, so um, you, know, you can do view sheds, water sheds in here, uh, which maybe we'll do at some point down the line as well, because that's pretty interesting. Uh, but today I'm more interested in looking at summarizing my data set here, because I've got all these different points of, uh, with different types of data inside of it. So you can click on the information icon next to any of these analysis tools to get a nice little summary of what the analysis does. So with the aggregate points, it's going to go ahead and aggregate these points within um, a selected set of polygons and also provide some statistics for you on that data. Uh, you may be wondering, well, how is that different from Summarize Within? Well, Summarize Within works by looking at overlapping data and then providing statistics on that overlap data. And then there's Summarize Nearby, which is actually going to do stuff like the, uh, the example it gives you here is um, calculate total population within five minutes of a proposed new store location. So this is going to do uh, you know, some sort of uh, nearby analysis based on uh, distance or maybe like a drive time uh, type of analysis. So let's go and stick with the aggregate points. And if I click on aggregate points here, uh, I'm just going to go and pick my layer. And at any point that you don't understand what one of these options is, you can just click on the little information icon and it'll give you an idea of what it is you might be trying to do. So one of the really neat things here is that 
I've got my request uh, layer of points and I need a layer um, that I'm going to aggregate on. So this needs to be a polygon layer. So if you don't have a layer available to you at the moment, you can choose a layer from the Ling Atlas, which is really cool. So if I come in here, I can try and pick one of these hex bins and um, the hex bins are kind of neat, uh, except to me, I think this one only goes down to 10 kilometers. I don't think there's anything smaller than that. Uh, let's see, 25. Uh, 10 might work. For Alley County area, that would only be maybe, oh gosh, maybe a, about 5 or 10 hex bins, which isn't really going to do too much for me. Um, I might be more interested in looking at uh, census tracts. Now, I could go for block groups, um, but I think I might actually want to go for the tracks areas themselves. Um, the blocks might be uh, too small to really uh, do much of an analysis in here. So I pick my tracked areas, and I can start adding statistics to the aggregated data. What I mean, I'm aggregating for a reason. I just don't care about the number of points inside of a polygon. I care about uh, the statistics of the data inside that polygon. So I'm going to add statistics here and I'm going to look at the, uh, let's look at the total. So we get the sum of the uh, different data sets I'm curious about. And what I'm curious about is the issue types, right? So I want to know how many uh, requests for uh, sewer uh, workers in here or a uh, new request are in here. And again, this data set uh, was created for uh, my first book so that users didn't have to create their own feature layer and do stuff. They could edit this one. So all the data in here isn't exactly 100%. Uh, if before I really did this analysis for production, I'd probably go in there and clean it up and uh, try and remove some of the uh, bad data or normalize the data at least. In this case, I'm just going to run it as is. Uh, not a big deal. And I'll just leave the result layer name the same. Uh, it's not a huge issue for me. And again, using the analysis tools does use up some of your ArcGIS online credits. So it's always a good idea to click on show credits to find out how many credits I actually use. So in this case, I'm going to use up about uh, just a little over three credits, which isn't a big deal. My developer account gives me uh, 50 free credits a month. So this isn't a problem here. So I'll go ahead and run this analysis now. And I'll come back to you as soon as it's done running. All right, awesome. So my analysis is completed. And you see here the results on the map. This is pretty cool here. So I've got my uh, data set, my original data set here, which I'll turn off for now. So we see the data in here. And we've got our aggregation of requests uh, to the US Census tracts, right? So if I click on um, this tract in here, it's going to give me a count of points by issue type. And that's not a very good chart. Let's try another one. Here we go. So that particular track didn't have any. This one has six in here. All right, so I've got two graffiti. I've got three new requests and one street light in there. Awesome. Let's zoom in a little bit down here. All right, so click on this one here. I've got two points in here. I've got one new request and one pothole. This one over in here. I've got one issue type and two new requests. Very cool. So again, that's how you can use ArcGIS Online to do aggregation of your data set here. And it already went ahead and it did the um, Civology for me already. So if I'm not happy with that. Of course, I can come in here and play with it a bit more. So we're doing count the points, and I'm doing counts and amounts uh, based on size here. All right, so uh, I'm not happy with that. But I can also go in here and I can do uh, counts and amounts uh, with color. Right, so now I'm going to be coloring my data set and I can just use uh, unique, which I won't go with because um, that's not very helpful at any time. Uh, I like the counts and amounts based on size though, which is very cool. All right, so it already sets all the color up for me. Um, 
and stuff, so I'm pretty happy with that. And if we look at the options here, um, so let's say, for example, I don't want to show my polygons. So let's go ahead and no color there for the fill, no color for the outline. Click OK. Click OK here. Click Done. And there we go. We pretty much have a, a clustered data set for our aggregated data that comes with all the summarized points. Uh, you know, but the real data is still there. So I've got uh, one graffiti, two potholes, and one street light inside that particular tract. And there you have it. Now I can go ahead and save this, uh, save this map. Uh, the layer has already been saved and use this inside of any of my other applications I want to use. And that's how you can do the analysis to aggregate your data inside of ArcGIS Online. Thank you.